The history of the icebreaker dates all the way back in the year 1200 with these things called the Karkai. And then in the late 1800s with this thing called the Fram. And then after that, this thing called the Pilot. But none of those are actually considered icebreakers because the modern day definition of an icebreaker is a ship that can withstand one meters or greater of ice. So those ships that I mentioned before are actually ice strengthened ships. Actually, the last two, the, the first two aren't ice strengthened because they're just, I don't know, kayaks pretty much, kayaks and wooden ships. Anyway, the greatest enemy of an icebreaker is actually friction because as a lot of people think the icebreaker does is it goes up and this is icebreaker. This is the ice, by the way, the icebreaker just hops and hits the ice and just crushes it and pulverizes it and pushes it out of the way. No, that is actually a misconception. An icebreaker actually has this ramp shaped uh, front where it actually goes up and over the ice and breaks it and does it again and again and again. And that's how an icebreaker do, as uh, Z Frank would say. <laughs> Anyway, uh, there's another actually really famous front front end. It's actually called a bow, but I didn't want I did not want to use the bow. <laughs> there's actually another famous bow, which is a rounded shaped bow, which also does the same thing. So friction is its greatest enemy because as it goes up and over the ice, it creates a lot of friction. So there are holes in the hull of the ship, which is the bottom, which releases steam and this steam kind of lubricates the ice and helps it flow right underneath. Also. When your ice goes right underneath your ship, it tends to hit propellers and stuff. So the propellers are recessed up into the ship. And because ice kind of, you know, floats around underneath the ship, there are also no stabilizers, which is pretty bad later on. I'm gonna tell you about it later on. Anyway, let's say you're an icebreaker. You're stuck in the middle of the ocean because you were looking up at the sky for, for a whole month research project, let's say. Now you are kind of boxed in with these ice sheets and frozen water, just ice absolutely everywhere. How do you free yourself? You can't just turn on your engines and go forward because there's not enough momentum for you to break ice and you can't actually move this giant ice sheet. So instead, what you have are these ballast tanks filled with water inside your ship. And what you do is you, you, get, you get your pumps and you pump all the water to the right side of the ship and then to the left side and to the right end. And pretty soon your ship will start wiggling itself free. And once it's free, it'll just start to move, move around and kind of just break ice, do its thing, you know? Um, so how does it move left and right, forward and back? Well, it has these azimuth propellers. That's what they're called. They can rotate 360 degrees and they're pretty awesome. Um, and again, yes, they're protected by the hull and this horizontal thing, I forgot what it's called. I think it's called an ice knife that protects the propellers from getting hit with more ice. So anyway, the ballast tank actually rocks your boat, but you know what else rocks your boat is stormy weather and stormy seas and just really bad weather. Well, if you're an icebreaker stuck in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and I mean in, near the equator, um, since you don't have these stabilizers, you actually have a really bad time out in the ocean. So instead, you use the ballast tanks that's inside your icebreaker to kind of help you stay stable um, out in the stormy seas. Now, you gotta think to yourself, what is an icebreaker doing out in the middle of the Pacific? Shouldn't they be up in, in the north or the south? Well, that's actually the point because sometimes they're needed all the way up in the north, sometimes they're needed all the way down in the south, depending on the season. So there's these ballast tanks that help you um, in heavy seas, but here's another problem. Because your bow is shaped like a spoon or, or rounded, what happens is instead of cutting through waves like normal ships do, what you actually do is you crash through waves. So you just have a terrible time going through the Atlantic or the Pacific. So what's the solution to this? And this solution is very clever. That is, you have two fronts of your ship. One at the front, which is a real front, and one at the back. So what happens is you have the front of your ship, which cuts through waves. That's easy. You know, that's for long haul. That's for long travel. And then when you reach the, the places with ice, you actually go reverse into your ice. And the back of your ship actually has this ramp, which goes up and over the ice and crushes it. And again, this is where that, that um, the ice knife comes into to play because, you know, you don't want to hit your propeller. You know what else blows my mind is an icebreaker that instead of going backwards, and instead of going forwards, oh, I mixed up. Instead of going forwards and then backwards, it actually goes sideways.
face. That's right, there is an icebreaker out there that goes sideways. That's just crazy to me. And it's not crazy because, you know, we haven't built the technology to go sideways. It's crazy because it makes sense. Instead of having two little icebreakers that have to break the ice for this giant ship right behind you, or one giant icebreaker that's just, you know, plowing through ice, you just need this one ship. Anyway, what else is really cool about icebreakers? Well, this is more for ice strengthened ships. Even though you're ice strengthened, you still don't want to plow through ice. So instead, what you do is you have this bulbous bow. And what that does is when you're going forward, it's just right underneath the water line. And when you're going forward, you actually lift the water up over your, your bow, your bulbous bow. And lifting water with ice in it causes the ice to kind of just break. And once it's broken, it's easy for you to go right through. So anyway, that is really cool. That is icebreakers. And if you guys want to learn more about it, I'll paste my notes down below at the link or somewhere in the blog if you want to see more photos. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. And thanks a lot for watching. And I enjoyed my time.